Oh geez, I really don't know what to talk about today. Oh man, maybe we can talk about Space Force 1 or the GDP growth at 3.9%. I mean, that's funny. Wait, wait, keep me in frame. I'll do it, I'll do it. No! Today we're talking about America's immigration policy of creating unaccompanied minors and moving them to facilities. A concept that seemed a lot more fun a few years ago when it was starring Louis Black. I got unaccompanied minors! Is this some kind of prison? Could be worse. <laughs> Unaccompanied minors. Merry Christmas to me. Ooh, that did not age well at all. So what's going on here? And not from a moral angle, but from a legal angle. Because the US isn't doing this for fun. Now, this might sound evil, but the cost of holding migrant children who have been separated from their parents in newly created tent cities is $775 per person per night, according to the Department of Health and Human Services. Now, not to be that guy, but what the heck are we doing? Holding them in the Ritz Carlton with those Saudi princes? I mean, that's about my monthly rent in Queens. Furthermore, HHS has said it's holding nearly 12,000 immigrant children. That comes to just over $9,300,000 per day out of our tax dollars. That's insane. All right, I hear you guys saying, well, if it costs that much to keep the kids secure without their parents, just imagine how much it would cost to keep the family together. Well, when you keep the family together, it costs only $256 a night, which leads us to a savings rate of $6,228,000 a day. And not to sound completely and utterly immoral, but damn, that's a lot of money to do something very unpopular. So again, why are we doing this? Well, and don't blow a gasket, Republican viewers, because I'll get to Obama in a second. But something changed under Trump, or more accurately, Attorney Jeff Sessions. That's caused so many families to split up. This doesn't have to be done. The president could pick up the phone tonight and stop this policy of separating children from their parents. What's the real truth there, General Sessions? Well, I guess what she's saying is the president could just issue a directive that everybody that enters the country unlawfully be released into the country and never be apprehended or stopped or prosecuted for the illegal entry. He's right. The president can't just pick up the phone and end this program. We're signing an executive order. I consider it to be a very important executive order. It's about keeping families together while at the same time being sure that we have a very powerful, very strong border. He has to stay seated and sign something. All right, we'll get to that executive order in a second too, don't worry. But first we need to explore the underlying issue of what's happening. Now if you notice in what Jeff Sessions is saying, it wasn't so much about separating families, but more about a zero tolerance policy. And zero tolerance policies are always great. Just ask the 10 year old who got suspended for making a finger gun. You have the right to bear arms, but apparently not fingers. Gee, that was bad, I'm sorry. Anyways, this immigration policy was a significant change from the previous Obama policy of catch and release in which illegal immigrants apprehended at the border are released into the interior of the United States to await the processing of their cases. As you can imagine, this was really not a great idea if your end goal was to kick out illegal immigrants. Because, as the same article reports just after that, a lengthy backlog of asylum claims made it likely that it could be years before they would have to appear before a judge to back up that play. And many never returned to do so. Didn't see that one coming. This practice was big under the first six years of George W. Bush before the Department of Homeland Security canceled it in 2006. And then it was reignited under Obama's DACA program. So why was it popular? It seems about as efficient as me trying to get someone to move out by leaving them passive aggressive post-it notes. Well, we did it partially for morality reasons and partially because deporting someone is hard. It's not just Oh, you don't have papers? Well, let's get you on the next plane to Mexico. It leaves in 45 minutes out of JFK. Ah, oh, sorry, but they only have middle seats available. Today is just not your day. 
No, you need an official order of removal that is issued by an immigration judge. And there's a whole lot of asylum and appeal processes that are means it could take years to actually get someone out of the country. All right, so what does any of this have to do with splitting up families? Well, on April 6th, 2018, while well, everyone was talking about... Day 441 of the Trump administration and President Trump has broken his silence on porn star Stormy Daniels. On his way back from West Virginia, the president denied knowing about the $130,000 payment his attorney, Michael Cohen, made to Daniels just days before the 2016 election. Well, that sounds like everything I would need to know about the issue right there, but apparently not. While we were getting an in-depth analysis on the president's lack of knowledge on those payments, well, the president signed a memo ordering ending the catch and release immigration policy. So what did this change do? Well, in addition with Jeff Sessions' zero tolerance policy on illegally entering the country, it made it so that anyone entering the country without proper papers will be taken immediately into federal criminal custody. But. Guess who can't be processed into the federal criminal custody? Minors! Which means that families are being split because immigrant children actually have additional rights. So this splitting families thing might have been more born out of excessive incompetence rather than a malicious desire to hurt minority families. Alright. So how does Obama fit into all of this? The last well, administration, the Obama administration, the Bush administration, all separated families at the, parents. they absolutely did. Well, they, they did, their rate was uh, less than ours, but they absolutely did do this. This is not new. Yes, their rate was a little higher. Say one split family every six months instead of 2,000 split families over two months. But why oh why Obama would you split any families? You're so cool. It's because, and this might be breaking news to some liberals, but occasionally illegal immigrants do commit additional crimes too. And when they do, they have to go into federal criminal custody for those crimes. And there's no bring your daughter to prison day. Oh, one other thing that Obama did was... Pictures from a media tour of a U.S. Border Patrol Youth Detention Center show the sleeping conditions for detained children. They're given showers, clean clothes, and recreation. That was reported in 2014, although it looked like it could have been reported days ago. And I have to be honest, it really confused me because it kind of went against everything I'd read. That is, until I realized that. The influx of so many unaccompanied minors has presented a dilemma for Border Patrol agents. Basically, they're a law enforcement agency not accustomed to providing care for so many youth. Oh, okay, these are unaccompanied minors. And not the unaccompanied minors in the sense that we put their families in federal detention centers that they're not allowed into. These are just minors that showed up and we're not exactly sure what to do with them. They wouldn't be covered under DACA because, well, we don't want to just let minors run around on the streets. One final Obama thing that annoyed people at the time was the report that in 2015... So what happens to families who are detained by Border Patrol? They're sent to family detention centers, where immigrant women and children are held for months at a time. They're never charged with a crime, nor granted any legal rights, and they face bonds as high as $15,000. Now, that seemed bad before the bar was lowered to the depths of the Marianas Trench. This basically goes against, well, everything Democrats imagine about Obama, because these were short-term detention centers designed to keep families together and rapidly turn over illegal immigrants who had arrived from Central America. There was a problem though that immigration activists used to get these camps shut down. Although, with hindsight, it might not have been the best strategy. Just listen to the New York Times dig into Obama in this 2016 article. But those privately run unlicensed lockups are no place for children. It's hard to imagine that Obama will use the appeals court ruling to break up families, sending children to foster care maybe while continuing to hold their mothers behind bars. Yeah, so we shut them down because those centers kept kids. Victory! Alright, so now, what is the executive order that Trump just signed that it's gonna allow all of us to start talking about his sex life again? Republicans in Congress have proposed legislation that would overrule Flores and allow children to be kept with their parents in immigration and customs enforcement custody while they're put through criminal prosecution and deportation proceedings. 
We did it, guys! If everything goes well, minors will no longer have the right to not be held in federal criminal custody. Wow, that was really not the cinematic ending I was hoping for. But at least we got the families back together. Now, Donald Trump can't just sign a page to take these rights away, because this rule was written by the Supreme Court case of Flores v. Reno. It's suspected that any executive order that Donald Trump writes to let families stay together in these federal detention centers will likely be challenged in court. But we're yet to see whether Trump's Department of Homeland Security can rewrite the books to keep families living together with their immigrant minors in federal detention centers, which, for the first time in US history, might be pitched as the moral high ground. Thank you, and that's all I have to say about that. Hey YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support independent nonpartisan comedy news, remember to subscribe below and always give me a thumbs up. And thank you for watching.